If you're new to the channel, my name is Aaron John Gregory, and I'm a biological illustrator, musician, professional scuba diver, and aquarist. I'm fascinated by all aquatic life, especially fish. Join me as I peer into unexplored and often ignored aquatic environments, many of which are right under our feet, in hopes of discovering what lives down there. Try to hit right there. Off there yeah, maybe. Well, let's walk down the creek. Okay. I can totally do that. Oh, yeah? yeah? Mandy says, watch out for rattlesnakes. Well, king snakes, too. Don't step on them. I would so love to see a king snake. We are here at Sutter Creek with my sister Mandy. Make sure to check out her channel, all about horses, uh, ice climbing. Okay, Sutter Creek is a pretty cool town, not far from Jackson, a little bit different vibe, a little more shabby chic, but still rich with slimy creeks like that. Hence the name, Sutter Creek, Mandy's hiding. Also today, it's supposed to be 108 degrees. I would say right now it's definitely mid 90s, about two o'clock, by about four or five, it's gonna be unbearably hot. Fires are in full effect in California, so there's ash all over everything. The sun was just looked menacing this morning. So we have crazy fire air, we have a pandemic, and it's 108 degrees. And it doesn't matter, because we're gonna explore this creek right here. Because I see mosquito fish. This might finally be the mosquito fish episode. This is gonna be the mosquito larvae episode. What's worse than having to fall back on doing a mosquito fish episode? A mosquito larva. about 16 inches of water, maybe 18. I'm seeing fish swimming around. Mandy and I both think that it's probably mosquito fish, but you never know until you get the camera in there. I guess I have to use the rope. Yeah, I'm not jumping in there. <laughs> it's a little murky. Mosquito fish, or whatever they are, some kind of small minnow, totally not scared by the camera in the water. Uh, they're actually swarming right in front of it, schooling right in front of it. Um, so I'm gonna just dip this in. I'm gonna film the GoPro with the GoPro. All right, so how hot is it down here? It's so hot that I had to turn off the iPhone. It overheated while just filming the, the last 20 seconds. So I got the GoPro, brand new GoPro I just bought. Give it to Mandy. Look at this pool right here. That's our pool. All these big fish in there. Good big fish. Oh yeah, look at this. There's a bluegill. Our little, little, uh, long your bath maybe, I don't know. All right, that's our hole. That is worthy of dropping the camera in right there. So we've got this bigger pool here. There's definitely different species. Um, what I'm seeing shape-wise looks like uh, it's bluegill. Maybe some kind of small little bass. Definitely worthy of throwing the camera in. Let 
check it out. The fish are swarming in to look at it. I don't know if you can get that. But the camera landed on its back. So since it's a rope operated vehicle, I simply do that. It falls back down, positions itself. And it is getting swarmed with fish right now. All this flurry of activity can make it a bit hard to tell what species these fish are. But any freshwater nerd can easily see that these aren't the round-bodied mosquito fish we mentioned earlier. With their long pointed bodies and sharp angular fins, these quick moving little fish are easy to recognize as one of two common minnows found in California rivers, lakes, and streams. They are either Sacramento pike minnows, also known as squawfish, or hardheads, the latter of which we saw briefly in episode 3 at the Gualala River. How do we tell which is which? It's actually really easy. Look closely. Hardhead have slightly deeper bodies and less pointed snouts than pike minnows, which obviously you can see the difference here, right? Or can you? Alright then. All you need to do is count the lateral line scales on the sides of the bodies. Hardhead never have less than 69 scales, while pike minnows can have as little as 65 scales. Easy enough. Also, the hardhead's maxilla does not extend past the front margin of the eye, but the fish still has a frenum, which connects the upper lip to the snout. The Sacramento pike minnow lacks a frenum. The difference now is clear as day. Surely you can tell, correct? Actually, at this young of an age, it's going to be really hard to tell. But generally, young Sacramento pike minnows have a spot at the base of the tail, which it appears that most of these do. Also, hardhead are always found with pike minnows, so by process of elimination, these pretty much have to be predominantly pike minnows, with some likely hardhead mixed in. These fish here are only about 2-3 to three inches in length. Considering hardhead average a foot in length, but can get as big as 2 feet long, and pike minnows can reach 3 feet in length, the fish here aren't just juvenile, some are practically fry. So definitely a bunch of small fish swarming it right now in the front, checking it out, probably being dread light. There goes one of the larger guys. Um, again, with any stream, or creek, little pond like this, when you walk up, you're gonna scare the fish away. So you gotta give them a couple minutes to come back after you've walked up on it. But they will, they'll come back, they'll come check it out. And then eventually they'll just ignore it, and go back to feeding, doing their normal thing. and. Uh, once that happens, then we get the actual footage of them behaving, you know, normally, as they would any other time of the day. Um, yeah, this is a great spot. And as if on cue, as more and more fish forget about the camera, other species come back around, introducing the Sacramento Sucker, a really beautiful and inquisitive little fish that generally travels in tight schools, grazing the bottom with their downward-facing mouths. This distinctive feature often gets them confused with catfish, but actually suckers are in the same order as carp. You can easily distinguish them apart from the other minnows here by the beautiful spots and markings on the side of their body. All right, so while the camera's sitting down here filming all these guys, um, we're gonna move underneath this bridge right here. There's a little waterfall pouring in from underneath the street. So I wanna check that out. I wanna see if there's anything that's kind of swarming around that waterfall. Again, it's like now it's over 100 degrees here easily. So we might just want to hide under that bridge simply for the sake of shelter. How strange is this? Like a monstrous creature made of muck and slime. Or it's just a large sediment deposit. Here we find the usual suspects again, enjoying the well oxygenated and cooler water under this waterfall. All three of these species, assuming that there are hardhead in here, have a lot in common. They're all native to California, and anglers consider them all to be junk fish. They ain't pretty. They often smell bad, and they taste horrible. No one wants them. So ironically, unlike game fish such as trout or salmon, you can catch as many junk fish as you want, no limits. 
But remember, it's against the law to cause the deterioration or waste of any fish taken in the waters of this state. So if you're not going to eat it, throw them back. I gotta give credit to Sutter Creek. It's beautiful down here, and there's like no garbage, no trash. Uh, they're definitely coming in and cutting the grass a little bit. Um, I don't know how much this city expects people to access this and enjoy it, but it's definitely cared for by the city. I mean, there's, almost, there's no graffiti except for this here. Breeze is just love, there's no place to go. So right past that big boulder, there's, looks like five pretty large, well, fairly large fish, either bluegill or some kind of small bass. on the camera. I threw the camera way over there and quite literally landed on top of the fish. Oh, yeah um, you did. And uh, so it's very much in their lair now and I'm going to let it sit here in hopes that they forgive me and decide to come back out into the world ever again after having this camera box dropped on their reality. Um, if they do come back out, I'm going to get some amazing shots. I'm a little worried because my aim was so good that have kind of anchored it on the other side of the rock and I may have to do some wading in this pond to get my camera back up. Or send your sister to go swimming. Or send my sister to go swimming. I mean, she's the intern, so. Fish have very short memories in regards to these kind of things. The best thing about my new GoPro is that it has a built-in fish scanner, which I've been eager to try out. It appears I may need to download the latest firmware update to get a better scan. But I can see a distinctive long ear shape here and bright white edges on the pelvic fins. These details should help in identification. Okay, I gotta try to get this camera cage. Oh, oh, wait. There's a big old fish right in front of my camera. Not gonna be good. Here's my chance to try the scanner again. Uh, I hope the GoPro is still on. It was running a little low on Tuesday. Anyways, I gotta get it out for my this rock. Like ninja. Yeah, camera was off, so it's been down there for 10 minutes, so who knows? Probably got other footage. So we hiked up a little bit here, but uh, in fear of wet feet, we can't really go much further. Wasn't really equipped in the footwear department. That's okay, because I got one more little pool I'm gonna explore. Right here, looks like it kind of drops off underneath this ledge. And I'm definitely seeing some stuff swim around. Sometimes this can be a good spot for something like a catfish, where you wouldn't see those out in the open. Over here, where we were before, where the sun's really hitting it. But regardless, it's going to be interesting, so I think this is the last drop of this little hike. It is hot. By dipping in the GoPro by hand before dropping in the cage and scaring everything off, I can sort of sneak into this aquatic environment unnoticed in hopes of observing the wildlife acting more naturally. Unlike this fish, which is coming in to check out the blinking red light on my camera, is this one of the larger bass-like fish from earlier? If only it would turn sideways. Maybe I could scan it. Ah, no such luck. With the heat beating down on us and becoming unbearable, 
Our time down at this stream was coming to an end. It was now or never to get this mystery fish identified. Otherwise, I'd be incorrectly calling them larger long ear bluegill bass guys. Luckily, here I've got two of them hanging out in front of my camera. If only one would get closer and turn sideways so I could scan it. Oh, I think this is my chance. This is a green sunfish a top predator in small freshwater ecosystems like this, eating insects, fish eggs, fish fry, and even crustaceans like crayfish. Let's drop the camera one more time. I want to find more of them. I think I got a lot of good activity here. There's literally fish swimming through the cage. The camera cage is just swimming through it, investigating and checking it out. My guess is there's easily three species, maybe four species on the camera. So this nasty little pond might have a lot of life in it. That's your next uh, song title. Nasty little pond. Nasty little pond. Come down to my nasty little pond. All right, Sutter Creek, that's a wrap. All right, successful Sutter Creek shoot cream soda. It's okay, now you're in my celebratory video. Uh, <laughs> Successful Soda Creek shoot. Boom, cream soda at this old-timey diner. There's a wasp flying in my hair. God, we can't shoot this right now. <laughs>